Hey there guys, welcome to Anthony Reviews where Anthony reviews. It feels like a lifetime ago now, but the late 2000s and early 2010s was a severely important time for the Transformers brand. Despite having continuous toys, cartoons, etc. since the 80s, it really took the 2007 live-action film to bring Transformers back to the mainstream. Following that a couple years later, we get a video game that managed to please not only the new live-action fans, but also the G1 diehards who have stuck around since the 80s. 2010's Transformers War for Cybertron was a massive hit. The game was a third-person shooter with a brand new take on the early days of the war between Autobots and Decepticons. With this brand new universe, we got brand new designs of classic characters. Of course, everyone's favorite Trader Jet Starscream was there. For the release of the game's sequel, Fall of Cybertron, Starscream received a toy based on his video game design. Now a decade later, we have a brand new figure based on that very same video game. So, let's compare the two now that we have both in hand. We're first going back and taking a look at the 2013 figure. This deluxe size Transformer is a fairly spot on representation of the video game version of Starscream. He's an odd shape, but all the characters in that game had a somewhat squat stature. I usually expect Voyager scale when it comes to Starscream, but the War for Cybertron and Fall of Cybertron figures were pretty much all the deluxe scale size. Except for Soundwave, which I assume was made purely for his cassette gimmick or whatever the cassette equivalent was for him, data discs or something. Anyways, I'm getting off track. This figure here does have a pretty decent amount of sculpted detail, as well as the right colors in all the right places for the most part. There are even little pink details in his vents to give him a little illuminated feel. The biggest glaring issue with him is this massive gap in the torso though. In order to give him his fairly angular body, we get this hole that goes all the way through. If you look at him straight on, you really don't notice it, but you look to the side and there it is, the other side of him. For articulation, this figure comes pretty limited. Unlike most 6-inch action figures, Transformers rarely come with a guaranteed set of articulation points. It all sort of depends on the transformation. If there's enough sort of parts left over after they figure out how to get this guy into a jet, then maybe that'll be allotted to wrists and waists and all that kind of stuff. So with that said, we've got some movement in the arms and legs, but you do have to sort of mess around with him to look good. The way his head sits on the body, you really have to have him thrusting forward in order for him to look straight. He's not exactly the most photogenic figure out there. He can stand, so there's at least that. For accessories, he's got these sort of minigun looking things that can peg into his arms, or any peg holes that he has all over his body. They also combine into one gun, which I have to say I do prefer. Once you put it on one of his arms, it does replicate that third-person shooter feel that the video game has. A neat detail is also once you combine them, they have this sort of gear mechanic that sort of goes in tandem with each other. It's pretty cool. With this Starscream being from an era of Cybertron, of course, he transforms into a space jet. Meaning they can get away with anything weird looking because it's not real. You don't know how things work on Cybertron the top of his head being visible, all of these sort of gaps. No, it's supposed to look like that. I kid, but this design does work fairly well, and the toy sort of clicks together in a nice way. It's alright, I don't hate it. Okay, time to go big mode and fast forward a decade later to the brand new studio series War for Cybertron Starscream. This guy is a decently hefty Voyager when compared to his hollow deluxe figure of yesteryear. When we first started getting images of this guy, I wasn't really sure what to think. I'll address the elephant in the room now and say that yes, the cockpit is very big. It looks like he's got a giant chamber of honey on his chest. It does open though, so if you'd like for him to light your darkest hour, you absolutely can. But of course, at first this appeared more bigger and a bit more awkward than, say, the deluxe toy, the older figure. However, I am happy to say that that isn't the case. I'm not going to say that this is the best figure ever. It might not even be the best of the new Studio Series War for Cybertron figures, but it's not bad. It's actually pretty good. The figure itself feels very solid. 
all the joints are nice and tight without being too tight. Unlike his old incarnation, this figure doesn't have a giant hole in it, so that's a plus. With that though, you really feel like you've gotten a figure that isn't cutting corners. Mostly. The wings are small. Too small for me, at least. If they were just a bit bigger, I think I'd be fine. Also, there's like little flaps on the legs. Why? I, I really don't get why they're there. Well, no, I get why they're there, I just don't get why they... They're just so small to flap. Everything else, though, is pretty pleasing. The colors are pretty basic and somewhat similar to the first figure, although they might be a tad bit more accurate to the game design. Nothing here feels overly premium or special, it's all very standard. It is nice, though, that things haven't gotten worse in that department. They've at least stayed the same or gotten better. Articulation feels a lot less awkward this time around. Everything moves in a logical manner. In theory, it's not too different from what the Deluxe was doing, but it manages to make it look better. This one has better head movement, better ankles, and it even has a waist. Transformers figures have managed to improve tremendously over the years when it comes to articulation, and that is something I'm very happy about. Accessories here are quite different from the Deluxe. Instead of two identical guns, you get what appears to be a sniper rifle and a big club. Is it a club? Is it a mace? Does it really matter? It's a big purple spiky thing and you smash people with it. One of the key features of the video game was equipping new guns and weapons and defeating enemies in a variety of ways. Using these figures, and even other figures in the line, is really cool, especially since you can remove the forearms to plug them in and give that video game feel. Although compared to the deluxe figure, this one has barely any peg holes to sort of peg weapons into. You've got some where you can fit them into the hand, and some on the back as well, but especially in today's age where we have all these weaponizers and battleizers and fossilizers, whatever isers you can imagine, it seems a little odd that this one doesn't have that many holes to plug. The jet mode for this one is... it's something. Did I do something wrong? It just looks weird, right? Like maybe the middle bit should be scrunched together to make it a bit more tighter. And of course the smaller wings just look ridiculous here, making the whole thing fairly unappealing to me. I just don't like it. It may be somewhat accurate to the game, but here, in my hands, it just doesn't work. Seeing these two next to each other, it's pretty amazing how similar yet different they are. At first glance, it's easy to assume that the new figure is just an enlarged version of the 2013 one. However, as you can see, that's just not the case. While the new figure does have a cleaner overall look and feel, on closer inspection, you can see that a lot of the details are simplified, softer. Meanwhile, the deluxe figure has far more accurate details, but when it's all together, it looks very hollow and somewhat like a gangly mess. Then, of course, there's small differences like color choices. As I stated, I think the new one has a bit more of an accurate color choice, not only in shade, but general placement on the figure, like the head now being an accurate blue instead of the sort of gunmetal gray. And also, look at the wings. The deluxe figure actually has bigger wings, and the back fins are fused together. On the Voyager, we have smaller wings, which may be more accurate to the game, I don't really care. The fins, though, are separate and can actually rotate around. I like that detail. These figures manage to achieve the same thing in very different ways. So if you're wanting to get one, which one should you get? Well, one of these, of course, is a brand new figure that should be available on store shelves at the time of this recording. The other figure, while smaller, isn't without its strengths and sculpt and its vehicle mode, but it can only be found online anywhere between $25 and $50. I guess it comes down to what you like. For me, I'm pretty happy with the new one. It looks better standing there naturally, and as I stated before, it feels very solid and pleasing to mess around with. Jet mode aside, I do think I prefer this new one ever so slightly. This video is brought to you in part by Hobby Link Japan. If you're a fan of things like Super Sentai or just Japanese media in general, why don't you check out Hobby Link Japan? They've got figures, statues, and a whole horde of different kind of collectibles. Click the link down in the description below to check out Hobby Link Japan today. 
Thank you all so much for watching my review slash comparison on the War for Cybertron Starscream figures. If you liked this video, feel free to check out some of my other videos. I do have quite a few Transformers related videos if you liked this one. I also have things on DC, G.I. Joe, all sorts of stuff. Uh, feel free to comment what you guys think of the figures down below, uh, what you guys would like to see from the Studio Series Gamer Edition figures. If you'd like to see from other War for Cybertron stuff, some other stuff, Devastation I know is a game that's on everyone's minds, but feel free to let me know. Um, also, at Anthony Lantern on Instagram and Twitter, and uh, subscribe for more videos. Thank you guys so much once again. Take care.